I'm gonna fucking do this as well. Today's a big day then. You know what the people in the estate are calling you? The People's Warrior. They think you're going to free them or some bullshit like that. Fucking idiots. Nothing will change. The minute you get rid of them, others will come and take their place. You watch. It's the way of the world. Yeah, well not this time, Debs. I'm going to clean this place up, yeah? I'm going to get revenge on what they did to Adam. Yeah? Well, revenge ain't gonna bring it back, is it? I'm not sure if Adam ever told you the real reason that he wanted to become a doctor. Yeah, to save other people's mums. Uh, that's one reason. The main reason is to earn enough money to get you out of here. Because you deserve that. You never told me that. Um, 
Listen, Deb, so this, I want to let you know, whatever happens today, win, lose, I'm going to give Adam what he wanted, yeah? Because he's right. You do deserve it. Those little rats on the estate have said he's just left his house. Yeah, he's gone for a run. Get him, make sure he doesn't make the fight. Do you hear me? Darren does not make that fight. Don't let me down. Hello, son. All right, mate. Pop these on, will you? Why the fuck do I want to do that? and Caribbean foot soldiers, they're collectively known as the Grim Reapers, cashing in on the vulnerability of recession hit residents and turning them into drug addicts, or as the gangs prefer to call them, the cattle. The gang's main currency is highly addictive meth, homegrown on the estate. This dodgy looking fella is Boris Alexikov, a very low level weapons dealer and human trafficker from Russia bringing in Eastern European girls under false pretenses of a better life in the UK and then forcing them into a life of prostitution. He set up base on the eastern side, controlling the residents of his army of immigrants, ex-special forces and general all-round naughty bastards. And unless you're Eastern European and know how to handle yourself, you ain't got no chance of joining the Eastern Demons as they're known and feared in the Britannia. Unfortunately for me, I have known this bloke since I was a kid. This scumbag, ladies and gents, is Frank Tunney. He is in control of the central part of the estate, with his army of racist thugs, hooligans and teenage street gang known as the Black Caps, collectively known as The Firm. Frank's dad started a gang in the 60s when the place first got built, but since his father's death, has managed to establish a more aggressive presence in all the residents of the central part of the Britannia. Bullying tactics and turning the residents into junkies, all favourite money-making tactics of Frank, selling a meth, homegrown in his gym on the estate. With all the money to be made and seeing him as a threat, he is not happy about the Grim Reaper's recent growth in business. But the 
three gangs tolerate each other for one single reason. Yeah, you've guessed it. Money. By working with each other, they are able to trade and maintain control over all the cattle of the estate as they call it. But there is an overall gang lord that all three must answer to. A lord that keeps the three gangs in line and maintains total control and dominance over them. And most importantly, the Britannia estate itself. Based in his rooftop layer, on the very top of the central tower, he is notoriously known throughout London simply as the Big Boss. One of the original faces of the city, he helped to carve the way for the criminal underworld of London we know today. And when I say carve, I mean literally carved. A lifetime of criminal activities has left him seeking spiritual refuge in a pseudo-Japanese fantasy persona, barely leaving his rooftop hideaway. Some say his heart's not in it no more and is looking to retire as he has no heir apparent. But don't underestimate him. He could still string you up by your ankles and slice your face off before you could say sashimi roll, just like the old days. Now as long as the three gangs work together, there is no reason for the big boss to leave his high rise sanctuary. That is, until one of the cattle from Frank's turf has wandered over into the Grim Reaper's turf because the Grim Reaper's product is a lot more stronger than Frank's. And the Grim Reapers are more than happy to take the money out of his hands. Now as you may have well predicted by now, this can only lead to tension, especially if Frank has been tipped off. So he decides to wander over into the Grim Reaper's turf to make an example of one of his stray cattle as he calls it. That's not what it looks like, man. You've got to be careful, Pat. Take someone's eye out of that. Let's get out of the house. Hopefully the wife and kids don't scream. It's amazing. That's what's in peace, man. You don't give a shit about your fucking wife and kids. Which gimmick for? It's yours. Don't oh, fucking muck me off, you junkie. I know it's not mine. Where'd you get it from? I got it from the Crew Reapers. Yours is good, so th this is better. Fucking grim reader. Talk to that. Please, man, don't. Not worth the kids, I'll overdose. Listen, you never have too much of a good thing. Oh. You like your junkie mug? <laughs> Sam, what the fuck are you doing on my turf, boy? You got a death wish to say? Alright, settle down, boys to men. I lost one of my sheep, I found him over here. It's like to put him out of his misery. So fucking what? And while we're on the subject of sheep, stop peddling your shit gear to my papers. <laughs> Cattle, mate. They'll graze with but they don't want to fucking graze, will you? Well, you reckon? Well, let me tell you something, boy. My lot have been here a lot longer than your fucking lot. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on a second. You watch your fucking mouth, man. Do you know where you're fucking standing, boy? I know exactly where I'm fucking standing. I'm fucking scared of you. You think I'm scared of you, boys? Hey? Hey, you think I'm fucking scared of you lot? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, son. Do you see this? We make the mistake. Get down here, son. Get down here now. Now, there's a very famous saying right now, right? He says fuck all to them, you. This has everything to do with me. You're selling him your shit, he's selling his shit. Everyone is covered in shit. Two's company, three's a crowd. And if three's a crowd... Four is a party. Thank you. 
Does anybody want to tell me what the fuck is going on here? So the big boss is pissed and calls for an immediate meeting in his rooftop layer. He explains to the gang leaders that the only way the coalition can exist is if they all work together. Otherwise, the cattle on the estate are going to rebel. Now he finds them all 10 grand each and they get back to business. Main subject on the agenda tonight, the Eastern Demons want to trade with the Grim Reapers. Guns for drugs. On the table is 100 grand's worth of Prime Reaper estate made meth in exchange for enough A-grade Russian military weapons to start a riot. The deal is agreed. And Boris has even thrown in some hookers from his side of the estate to sweeten the pot. The big boss is happy and peace is restored to the coalition. But Frank, he has other plans. I'll sort you out, you know that, right? Yeah? I'll go get a job tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah? By this time tomorrow night, we'll all be eating steak dinners. What are you gonna do? Steal them? What planet are you on? You can't just go get a job these days. Times are hard. Jobs are scarce. Recession? <sighs> Recession, it's all bollocks. Oh yeah? Then why are you back here then? I missed you, didn't I? Adam, why don't you take your brother's bag in your room whilst we clean up and then get ready for bed, yeah? But sis... Don't argue. Well, better do as she says, Adam. I thought she was about to turn green. <laughs> from my, my personal pawn collection or something, I don't know. So where's all the posters of birds and stuff? What birds? Birds. Mate, when I had this room, Kelly had this wall, and Pammy had that wall. Who's Pammy? Who's Pammy? Who's Pammy, are you serious? Mate, it looks like I've got a thing or two to teach you, innit? What's this? That there is a Monet. So what's a Monet then? He's an artist. Oh, is he the bloke that cut his ear off? No, Claude Monet was a founder of French Impressionist painting and the most consistent and prolific practitioner of the movement's philosophy of expressing one's perceptions of nature. Looks like there's a thing or two I can teach you. Some heavy reading you got going on there, mate. This what you're studying, yeah? Yeah. I can't even pronounce half of that stuff, let alone read it. Do you find it interesting? Well, I know I'm good at it. Good enough to get off to place at uni in America. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Mate, that's awesome. Well done. Well, hopefully I'll get a good job out of it. Earn loads of money. Get Deb out of here. She deserves that. Well, that's not so bad here. I always quite liked it. Things change. Anyway. I might not have been able to save our mum from cancer, but maybe if I become a doctor, I might be able to save other people's mums. Well, that's the way I look at it. Try your flat cap on. Yeah, of course, bruv. It's my, my lucky hat, that. Cost me over 300 euros. Designer. Quite like it. Yeah. Looks good on you. You know what? Keep it. It's too big for me anyway. Must be that big brain of yours. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, Daz. Never had anything as expensive as this in my life. Really? Well, when you go out to America, mate, you're going to need it for protection. What do you mean protection? Yeah, protection, man. Us Baxters 
are like magnets to the women. You're going to be fighting a ninja with a stick when you're out there. Young English man with an accent and a brain. Adam? Better go to bed. Don't want to upset short ass out there. <laughs> Night, Baz. Thanks yeah. for the hat. It's alright. He's a good kid. You don't need to tell me twice. Why is she not so protective of him? You've done a really good job bringing him up. Hey, Mum would be proud. I don't know where he gets it from me. He's got a meal you. He's got head on his shoulders. I'm the right guidance, he's going places. The further from me up, the better. Tell me about his scholarship. Let's go in the front room. Listen, he don't know, and I want to keep it that way. I'm going to get the money somehow and send him there myself. Whatever you do, don't tell him. As far as he knows, he's going to study in America. Debs, how are you going to afford the money to get him to the States? I don't know. I'll get it. I'm working all the hours on earth to pay for it. Where are you working? Don't matter where I'm working. Where? The pound shop on the high street. Fuck me, Debs, the fucking pound shop. Yeah, well, I'm doing nights as well. Got myself a cleaning job. Debs, you're not going to raise that kind of money on your own, are you? I'm going to go out and get a job tomorrow. Oh, really? Bore off, Daz. I'm going to wake up in the morning and you're going to be gone. Just like always when the shit hits the fan. Not anymore, Debs. I'm here to stay, and I? Listen, I'll give you a word. I'll get you the money. You give me a word, yeah? I swear, if you do a fast one, I'll hunt you down and strip the bullets clean from your body and I'll hang them on my front door like a Christmas ornament. Do you understand? I'm listening. Are you ready? Deb said she needs some interview clothes or something. Come on, I'll show you a couple of places around here. Don't worry, Dad. She'll warm up to you. Who? Deb. She's just been stuck up. She don't really hate you. Mate, to be honest, yeah, I wouldn't even blame him if she did. Every right team. It's not like I've been the best big brother these last couple of years. Why, what happened? He must have been about five years old at the time. Mum, she wasn't really that ill. Well, yeah, that's why I kept telling myself anyway. Debs, she proper idolised me, yeah? I remember once, right? She even went out and got the same haircut as me, yeah? Can you imagine a 10 year old schoolgirl running around the playground with skinhead? <laughs> Mum went mental. Yeah, and one day. I don't know, it just all got, all got too much for me. So I left. Went and joined the army. Left Debs all alone to look after you, Mum. She never really had a childhood. She's still a kid now, really. Anyway, a couple of years ago, I 
I've got a letter at my house in Spain from Debs. To this day, I don't know how she got my address. But, you know, it's Debs, isn't it? Uh, so, her mum's last request before she died was to see her, her kids by her bed one last time. It's a final kick in the teeth to Debs from me, you know? I didn't even turn up to the funeral. I can't really tell you why. But I don't know. So yeah, she got every right to hate me, mate. I don't blame me if she did. What was that like? Dad. Dad was a wanker. He said, pass her to a drink. He was slapping mum around. Got one in the back of the head trying to rob a bookies in Bethnal Green. That's about all you need to know about him. But Debs, yeah? She's done a really good job of bringing you up. Not bad. Even for a hobbit. Come <laughs> on, oh, mate. Shoot. Listen, you know I'm here for you, don't you? I've not been around for a while, but... You know, I'm here for you now, yeah? Yeah. Got you back, yeah? Yeah, thanks. You know, I can't go. I've got to go to college. Oh, no. See you later on, yeah? See you tonight, yeah? Cheers, mate. be the authority around here. But this is my state. Ah! Don't be full better age. They may be young but they're not stupid and they hunt their prey in packs. You want it? Come get it. Mate, you're going a bit mental. What you got, bro? What you got, bro? Ah, oh, I know you, mate. You're Adam. 
You think you're too good for us, didn't you? Get your fucking arm off me! I like this, eh? What you got then? Nothing, nothing. Speak up, speak up, mate, speak up. We asked you, what have you got for us? You wanna leave him alone, mate? And, uh, what happens if I don't? And if you don't, I'll be making you taste the back of your fucking chromium for weeks, mate. Every time you snort, mm. but your cranium, lovely, tasty, give me fucking that cake. See, one day, someone like me is going to teach you a lesson. Oh, fucking really, yeah? And who are you, eh? Keep it warm for me. Marketing. Yeah, I guess marketing, done a little bit of that. Fantastic. Uh, what sort of marketing was it? Niche, social media, online, offline? Flowers. Flowers? You know, Columbia Road Flower Market, up the road. I was a trolley boy there for a couple of years. I went out with a couple of old geezers, set their stalls up, picking all the dirt off the flowers and all that in the morning. No, I think you misunderstand. When I say marketing, I, I mean something different. Cold fucking mornings, though. Jobs don't grow on trees, Mr. Uh, uh, Darren. I don't think we can help you here at Baron Goldsmith. So I spent the whole day going up and down Shoreditch, up around the city, Liverpool Street, trying to find a fucking job. I even went into the fucking pub to get a cleaner's job. I got in there as some African bloke beat me to it. Now listen, I need a job. I don't care what it is or how much it pays. I don't care if I'm the fucking tea boy. I just need a job. I need money and quick. I might be able to help you out. So, uh, I have uh, some contacts in Shoreditch. I do a bit of DJing on the weekend and a you know, friend of a friend. Owns a few properties down there. The boys looking for big lads. So I found myself some work, working as a doorman in some rave club in Shoreditch. It wasn't ideal, but I put some money in the Adam fund for now. So not wanting to disappoint ads or dead, I decided to slightly lie about my job situation for two reasons. Number one, dead was right. It's bloody hard out there. And if I tell her the truth, I won't hear the bloody end of it. Number two, I'll keep working as a doorman until that big job eventually turns up. I mean, a half lie never hurt anyone. Dad, what are you doing out here alone? Alright, calm down. I'm just going to get some milk for Deb. Uh, what have you got your head up for? You look like one of them. You're as bad as her, you know. Take it off. Do as your big brother says. Better. Anyway, how do you go? Yeah, we're alright, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, got a job. Working for some Saudi bank. Looking after their security. Big money. Apparently there's a shortage for people with my skills in that industry, so... Yeah, good. Oh, wicked, Start that's tomorrow. Real. Wicked, that's real. Respect anything less, mate. Come on, let's go get that milk, come on. Been all right. Yeah, not bad, mate. Yeah, it's good to be back here. I've taken over from the old man, haven't I? 
Yeah, I know, mate. Sorry about his death. That's all right, mate. Things happen. Set the life. Who's that? I'm glad you don't recognise him. My brother, innit? Is it? Oh, Lee, you shut up. I remember you when you was down here. Didn't recognise you. Yeah, it was a long time ago, innit? Talking around in things, uh, I could stick a few quid in your pocket if you're interested. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna move a bit of food. How you getting on, brother? No, 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 no. Alright, mate, I've got a job. Fine. Sorted. Got a job working for the Saudis, in I, up in London. Hell oh, yeah. You've got to look after your own, innit? Adam, you know where to come. I could use someone like you. You know what I mean? Give us a shout, you know where I am. It's alright, mate. He don't need a job. He's got a brain on him. Book smarts, mate. He's getting out of this place. But he's stuck here. Like me and you. Street smarts did me alright, mate. Yeah, I can tell, mate. Adam, if you ever want a job, give me a shout. See you around. Listen, yeah, don't ever take money from that bloke. Don't ever take money from anyone. Yeah? Just drug money. You're better than him. Don't fall in the same way as him, yeah? Keep your fucking head down. Let's get that move. How long has this bit been derelict? About two or three years now. Yeah? Squatters and drugging and all of them. It's a shame, isn't it? I love climbing that tree. I broke my arm in that tree once. And that would die in that house. I don't know how much Debs has told you about me. She's said anything at all, but I've got a history. Me and Frank, I've known him since I was about five. Him and uh his old man and dad, you know, used to hang out, do a bit of business together. So it was just natural, you know, we started hanging out. We had big boots to fill, you know what I mean? Frank's dad, he was quite a well respected bloke on the manor, you know. We was just kids, you know, just having a laugh, making a bit of money on the side, nothing big. I, mean, I just wanted to have fun. It's obvious he wanted to build an empire. What a fucking empire he's built. Whatever you do, just stay away from him, alright? All that money, yeah, it's all drug money. Right out of the pockets of all these squatters and methods in these buildings. So you uh, looking forward to starting your new job? Yeah. Listen, why don't you go home and keep Dev's company? Get your head down, do some studying, yeah? I'll go down the shop and just get some milk and I'll see you in about half hour. Go on, fuck off. See you at home. Destroy the periods. Yeah, that'll be fun, wouldn't it? Let's have a bit of playtime. You want to leave him alone, mate? Come on, let me see what you've got. Mug. <laughs>
I've got your milk. He broke your nose. I swear he broke it. Who the fuck's that to you? Who's broke your nose? I don't know who he was. Some new bloke with a suit. Yeah, I know broke your fucking nose. You still got it then. Settle down your milk. Go and get him something to sort out his nose, yeah? Is One of your that? tampons or something. Is he dressed in Go on, fuck off. Right, we've got some business to discuss. Put that game down. We run this manor now, yeah? We ain't gonna have an alliance with any other firm. We're not gonna have it with other firms, yeah? It's all about us now. No fucking foreigners, yeah? None of the Grim Reaper shit. My old man left me this fucking business, yeah? And I'm not gonna see it get fucking run into the ground by a load of fucking Russians and fucking blacks and God knows what else. The Russians and the Grim Reapers have got a move, yeah? Guns for drugs. We fucking just roll up on them and that's it. We take it, yeah? It's about time we took everything in this place. Yeah, it's fucking right, it's about time. Get around going back and have a We go in disguised as the Russians, yeah? We stitch them up. Do they recognise the state boss? Well, no, we were going to recruit them, new me. And there's someone I've got in mind, and this should fit in just perfectly. Me wrong. There are good jobs out there. Well, it's like I said in it, Dan, you know what I mean? I told you jobs out there. Maybe next time they have a little bit more faith in me, yeah? So have they said anything about pay? What you want? If it's one of those Saudi princess companies, then you'd be on a big wage, I reckon. It should sort us well out. Just hold on tight, Dems, yeah? I don't want to jump straight in and be scared off and all that, yeah? And don't worry. There's going to be proper pay in that, you know? We'll get him out of there, don't worry. Adam, you're going to come say good luck to your brother? No, you don't need it. See you, Darren. <laughs> good lad. <laughs> anyway, Debs, I'll see you later. I don't be late for my first, uh, first day at work, do I? You know what? I haven't forgotten about those steak dinners either. <laughs> so Frank had decided to set the ball rolling about gaining total control of the estate. Not wanting to lose face about his top boy getting his nose broken by yours truly, decided to send a couple of his boys down on my first night on the job to return the favour. But as Frank's about to find out, things don't always turn out to plan. Hello, You've only been gone a couple of hours. Yeah, um, three hour day. That's how they do it in Saudi. They only work three hours a day because it's too hot or something. What do you mean too hot? I'd like to work three hours a day. Hang on. I'm smelling it. You got fired, didn't you? Didn't get fired. Well, why'd your shirt all ripped up? Why'd you stink like a nightclub? You've been out partying, haven't you? You fucking cock. I thought you changed, you prick. 
No, Debs, I haven't been partying. I've been working. Where? I've been working in Shoreditch, you know. Some illegal fucking backdoor nightclub. It's all the work I could get. You're right, it's fucking hard out there. Ain't no jobs. I've had to take what I could. You can't. You lied to me and Adam. I can't believe you. I feel like we finally had an answer. I should know better than to rely on you. Oh, I feel so stupid. Shh. Do you want to fucking wake Adam up? I will find the money, Debs. Well, you better, because he's this rate. He ain't going to America. He ain't going nowhere. Who knows? I might be able to get him to fucking shift down the pound shop. Do you want to fucking wake him up? Debs, I'll get him out of there. I'll get the How? We've got no money to pay for it. There's no money out there. You can always go rob a bank like Dad. With a bit of luck, you might get one in the back of your head as well. Why don't you calm the fuck down? Is that what you want? You want me to end up like Dad, yeah? Yeah? Don't you fucking ever put me in the same sentence with him again, yeah? I'm going to bed. Felt like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders, trying to figure out a way to send Adam to America and deal with Debs at the same time. But something just didn't sit right. I knew Frank was up to something, and I've known him for a long time. I know him like the back of my hand. I knew it was him who sent the boys down to pay me a visit. I know he wants me to go work for him. But even more, I know he wants Adam, and I don't want Adam to fall down the same path as I did. So I think it's about time I go pay Frank a visit. If you made a smart decision, you're the last person I thought was going to turn up. Well done, boy. Take that silly hat off. We'll be needing this one now. You remember what I said? You know the plan. So get out there and make me proud. know, have a chat, a civilised conversation, over a cup of tea. fucking work for you. He's got nothing to do with you. He owes you fuck all, right? Well, what's that? I find it hard to keep calm, mate. You fucking know who it is. Leave him the fuck alone, do you hear me? Fucking useless prick. Daz, have you got five minutes? Not now, mate. I'm kind of distracted at the moment, yeah? It won't take long. It's kind of important and... Listen, Ed. I've got a lot more mind at the moment, yeah? Ask me tomorrow. I can't wait till tomorrow. It'd be too late. For fuck's sake, I fucking told ya. Leave me the fuck alone. Do you know that amount of shit? I'm going for it the minute for you. Don't know why the fuck I ever came back to this shit hole.
next series of events is so ridiculous. When I tell you, you're probably going to think I'm making it up, and I wouldn't blame you. I wasn't feeling too pucker about how I just spoke to my brother, so I thought it would be a good idea to go for a little bowl around the block to clear my head. And I've got that feeling you get when you're being watched, and with all the CCTV in London, it ain't that hard. But then a few moments later, I knew I was being followed, and trust me, I know when I'm being followed. That numpty had done me right over. Bags me up, sticks me in the back of a van, and from what I can tell, we ended up in some abandoned East End warehouse. Now I've upset a lot of people in my past, and there's a list as long as my arm of people who like to see me brown bread. And this is the perfect location to do it. And just as I'm about to kiss my ass goodbye, I'm confronted by this rather shady looking character. Don't be alarmed, my dear boy. This is Mad Alan, and you may refer to me as Mr. Hugo. I politely asked a gentleman if they would kindly explain to me as to why I've been honoured with their presence that day. His response wasn't as friendly. You look really good with a tattoo on your head. I'll do you one from the charge. Or you can have one of my specialities, scarification. Good job, I'm thick skin. Alan, he is my guest. And as that, he will be treated as one. Turns out, this boat runs an underground fight league around London streaming the fights live to big money blood sport gamblers around the world. He saw my fight I had at the club on the CCTV footage and had managed to track me down, big brother style. Impressed by my skills, he wants me to join his underground fight league. Just as I'm about to tell him where to stick it, whilst thinking if they let me choose what I want tattooed on the boat race, they stick a big wad of money in my way. 5,000 to be exact, just to join the league. And a big money payday if I win my first fight. 25 grand. Not one to look a gift horse in the mouth and realising the delicate situation I was in, I decided to take a rain check on that tattoo, pocket the cash and asked him when my first fight was. I didn't like upsetting my brother, especially I didn't like him seeing that side of me. You know, I hadn't seen him in 10 years. So I decided it was right that before I go for the fight, I was to go and make it up to him. Tell him the truth of what I was doing. Not to worry, because in a couple of hours, we'll have that money to get him out to America. Adam? Adam? Listen, mate, I need some change from the phone, yeah? I've only got a fiver. If I give you that, will you give me the change you got in there, yeah? Oh, he's... Uh, go on in. Please leave your message after the tap. Hello Adam, I want to apologise mate, I spoke to you yesterday, why not? I was out of order. I'm sorry, I was under a lot of stress at the minute and yeah, there was no excuses really. I'll tell you what, I'll be home in a couple of hours, let's sit down, have a chat, you can tell me whatever you want, right? Because I'm here for you Ed, I love you.
we are alive. Somebody want to tell me what went wrong? Where's Adam? Slapped him. <laughs> Where's the fucking logic in that? He's one of us! Fucking chill out! Chill out! How can you fucking chill out, boy? Whoa, whoa! Grim Reaper saw him. I think the Russians done it. 
A ball case now. You think, boy? Besides, didn't like the tosser anyway. You can fucking learn something from him. Can you put the kettle on? idea how my brother died. Other than he was wearing an Eastern Demon's hoodie at the time. That's all the information I needed to know. Feeling disgusted by the actions of the gangs and seeing the coalition break down to an unrepairable state, Big Boss felt like he had no other option but to step down as Lord of the Manor. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. If any of you are opposed to me stepping down, make yourselves heard now. I thought as much. But this old schooler wasn't going to hand over his throne just like that. I mean, how would he choose a successor? The only way that old schooler knew how. Hand to hand combat. He declared it was to be a fight tournament between the three gangs held in his rooftop layer. Each gang can choose one representative in the tournament. The winning gang in the tournament gains ultimate control over the estate and total dominance over all other gangs. That's where I come in. You ain't the leader of no firm. Don't tell me he's fucking representing you. I ain't fucking representing anyone. I'm not representing him. I'm not representing any firm. I'm representing every single person that calls this estate their home. I'm entering this tournament. And if I win, I'm gonna clean this place up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of every drug peddling, scummy motherfucker. This, this is bullshit. You threaten me like this. Do you know what happened to a man like you in my country? You're not in your fucking country, are you? You're in my fucking country. You're in my manor. You look like we've got a new entry. Ooh, boss, I want him. I need my payday. I want him. Hold your horses, that trick. You've already got your fucking nose broken. I've got a game plan. I want to use one of the black caps. But boss, no. What you're going to do, you're going to get two of them horrible little black cap chaps together tomorrow at my gym. The winner is going to represent us in the tournament. As an incentive, offer them a massive bag of puff. I should get them going. So go on, fuck off, you know what to do.
Remind me of someone. You're an evil little fucker. That's why I like her. Don't let your guard down. Because you won't beat this bloke. Not in a proper fight. You've got to get in his head. You've got to play mind games to beat him. I've seen him row.
Frank's boy had managed to make light work of the Eastern Demon's fighter. Boris loses total control over the eastern side of the estate. Now more than ever I need to get to that final and dish out some revenge for my brother. All I have to do now is tear through whatever the Grim Reaper has put in front of me. Bollocks. All 22 stone of the bastard. I'm gonna fucking do this as well. Today's a big day then. You know what the people in the estate are calling you? The People's Warrior. 
They think you gain a freedom or some bullshit like that. Fucking idiots. Nothing will change. The minute you get rid of them, others will come and take their place. You watch. It's the wild world. Yeah, well not this time, Debs. So I'm gonna clean this place up, yeah? I'm gonna get revenge for what they did to Adam. Yeah? Well, revenge ain't gonna bring it back, is it? I'm not sure if Adam ever told you the real reason that he wanted to become a doctor. Yeah, to save other people's mums. Uh, that's one reason. The main reason is to earn enough money to get you out of here. Because you deserve that. You never told me that. Listen, Deb, so this... I want to let you know, whatever happens today, win, lose, I'm going to give Adam what he wanted, yeah? Because he's right. You do deserve it. I'm going to go for a run, yeah? little rats on the estate have said he's just left his house. Yeah, he's gone for a run. Get him, make sure he doesn't make the fight. Do you hear me? Darren does not make that fight. Don't let me down. Hello, son. All right, mate. Pop these on, will ya? Why the fuck do I want to do that?
Looks like your boy's arsehole's gone. Come on, don't let me down, boy. Don't let me down. Choke him out. Kill him. You don't even know the name of the word family. Kill him. Get up, you shit. 
getting fucked up. Get up, boy, get up! You fucking stay there. Why did you both up? You lost. Fair and square. Where are you going to go? Where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? I fucking own this estate. I ain't going anywhere. You can go. What's your sense of honour? Fucking honour. Fuck your fucking shit tournament. Honour? Honour? If I want honour, I'll take it. I've got all the fucking power in the world. Fucking talk to me about honour. You're a fucking disgrace. I'm a disgrace. Where are we all these years? Where are we all these years? Darren? Hey? Fucking Afghan somewhere. Where was ya? Where was you when your brother needed ya? He's a nice lad, your brother. I liked him. Good lad. It's a shame what happened to him though, isn't it? Hey? I did love your brother. But when he was laying there on that cold pavement and he was crying, screaming, screaming at me, Darren. My brother Darren, big brother Darren, fucking screwed like a pig. Screwed like a fucking pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck off. Shut up, you slag. What the fuck was that? Come. What did you do? You fucking muck. What am I gonna do with all these dead bodies? And my carpet's ruined. I achieved what I set out to do. I got rid of the gangs from the estate and got revenge for what they did to Adam. The big boss had left for good. I'm quite confident that he left the place in my hands, reassured I would look over the estates and the people who lived there. I told Debs I would give Adam what he wanted, to get her out of the Britannia estate. And I did. She's never had a garden before. She finds it peaceful. She tells me she can feel Adam and Mum looking over her there. I comfort the thought. Happily ever after, right? So the big boss sends me a letter with nothing more in it than a postcode. Not knowing what to expect, I make my way to the destination. Nothing here but an old worn down relic of the past of London, a red phone box. I couldn't have thought of a more relevant place for an old schooler like him to want to make contact. He tells me of his latest venture, something about downloadable drugs using frequencies or some crazy sci-fi bollocks like that. He wants me to go into business with him and a new ex-army partner. He tells me I might know him. The army's a big place, I reply. Slightly decline his offer, and I wish him all the luck. Besides, I've got an empire to build. That's powerful, right? You know, I do love a good bit of street art, me. Love it, absolutely adore it. I love it because it's in a constant state of change. I mean, two days ago, this was a massive demon with a samurai cutting through someone's chest. 
and now this work of art stands in its place. Now you may be mistaken for thinking that demon has gone, but it's not. It's still there. It's just hiding under a superficial layer of colour and paint. But just because you can't see something doesn't mean that it's not still there. See, this is Jim. Now, Jim used to work for me selling drugs on the estate to all the cattle. Till about an hour ago. <laughs> you see, he kept shaving product off the top and killing it for himself. Not while I'm lord of the manor. And the little pricks on the south side of the estate. Now we'll fuck up, Patrick, yeah? Unless you're at the fucking nose point again. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, what else are I supposed to do? I mean, I worked fucking hard for them this year. I mean, who else is going to look after all them cattle? <laughs> now, I tell you what, I'm going to give you some advice and then you're going to fuck off. Now, little Jimmy over there is proof that you can never have too much of a good thing. Not all stories have happy endings. Now, never believe 100% of what anyone ever tells you. Because humans lie. And a half lie is the darkest lie for me. Deception's easy. It's reality that's the hard one. Now, fuck off. 